it's students like yourself who have the hardest time with reflections because Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A sponsored by Blueprint MCAT Prep. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am great. I'm excited to help you with whatever questions you may have. So what's what can I help you with? Yeah, you know, I'm just kind of getting started with the whole application process, getting ready to apply this June. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think as I'm getting ready to write on some of my experiences and such, um, I kind of wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, who I am. So I have a huge passion for pediatrics. I mean, it is written all over, <laughs> you know, my extracurricular. Yep. I've been a you know, supervisor for kids. I've done a pediatric internship. I've also primarily shadowed pediatric physicians. And so um, I'm just wondering how to balance, you know, not sounding naive, I guess, but also, you know, making sure like my intentions show through and my passion show through. Um, Where's that balance, I guess? Yeah. I I don't think there is one. Uh, I, I think you are who you are and you're passions are going to show um, throughout everything that you do, right? The I, I love to say actions speak louder than words, and your actions show that you are very interested in pediatrics. Now, does that mean that you are going to be a pediatrician? No, it just means like right now, that's where your passions lie. And so the biggest piece of advice is leave out, I want to be a pediatrician, every chance you get, right? And and specifically in a personal statement, that's where a lot of students like to just force, I want to be a pediatrician, I want to be a pediatrician. No, your experiences are around pediatrics right now, and you love kids and all of that fun stuff. But once you're in medical school and you're exposed to every other specialty and you maybe you get a mentor in a different specialty, you may change your mind in the future. And so the okay. the, the latest data is 75% right, of, of students change their mind once they get into medical school. So I, yeah. I think you don't need to temper showing everything you've done in and around pediatrics because that's just who you are yeah. at this point in your life. And so your experiences are going to show that. Again, I think the the common trouble that students have is is painting this picture that you will be a pediatrician moving forward and you don't need to do that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um and then also so obviously I'm applying to a huge range of schools I think right now probably around 25 or 26. Okay. Um but I am a California resident. Obviously I hope to stay in California and stay close to home. Okay. Um and I was wondering how to show specific schools um you know that I have an interest in going there. The two physicians that I've asked for letters of rec um, our associate faculty at this school that I really would love to go to. And so yeah. I don't, is that enough to, you know, kind of hopefully make myself stand out there or is there anything else I could perhaps do to really, you know, express that school that that is where I'm interested in going? Yeah. A- outside of an application, right? You submitting yeah. your application to them, you submitting your secondary to them, uh, depending on that school's specific secondary questions, if they have a question about why that school, that's where yeah. that sort of information comes from. Obviously the, the biggest challenge is, especially with a primary application, is that the primary application is generic to the school, yeah. unless okay. you're only applying to one school, which is probably not yeah. recommended, okay. right? You just submit one primary. You can, you can make that personal statement as direct as possible. The one okay. thing that potentially you could do, especially for AMCAS applications, is have okay. that letter writer, those letter writers, write specific letters to that one school. So that okay. they can specifically say, this student would be a great fit at this school. And how do I know that? Because gotcha. I'm on faculty there, because I was an alumni of there, whatever, okay. right? Um, so they could okay. be very specific. And then if you still want a letter from them to go to every other school, you have them write a generic letter that just says you're going to be a great medical student, period. Okay. And then would those, like if there was one for a specific school, would that be sent through AMCAS as well? Yeah. So AMCAS, and this is only good for AMCAS because ACOMIS and TMDSAS yeah. don't let you do this. But AMCAS, you can have 10 different letter writers in AMCAS 
And you can pick and choose, okay, letter writer one uh, is going to school A, B, and C. Letter writer two is going to D, E, and F. You can pick and choose. For ACOMIS and TMDSAS, all letters go to all schools. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you, I feel like you can't tell how it would work until you're actually in the program and like looking at it in the yep. spring. Yep. Oh, very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what the other questions I had. You know, they're always hanging out there. <laughs> um, I think in terms of just, you know, kind of going a little bit again into, you know, how I'm presenting myself and stuff like that. Um, I think I just wanted some advice on the, the balance when writing a personal statement about, I guess, I'm having trouble with my reflection pieces. Yeah. Um, and I think that I obviously I don't know how much feedback you can give me. Um, in terms of, you know, how to write reflections necessarily, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I just, cause I have, I, I do love writing and I feel like I, I'm really strong at writing those like sensory experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I I'll, just I'll stop don't... you there. I'll stop okay. you there because it's students like yourself who have the hardest time with reflections because you yeah. take that creative writing piece that you love to do and, and yeah. activating senses and you try to do that with a reflection yeah. and it the reflection doesn't work. Yeah. Reflections are slap me in the face, just tell me what you want to tell me. Don't yeah. don't make it pretty, don't make it sort of don't don't do an analogy, don't don't do anything like that, just tell me. Right? And you're an application academy and so we've been covering how to write your seed yeah. and how to reflect on it, the watering of the seed, how to reflect on it. And so it's a lot of storytelling, using that showing, not telling, activating yeah. my senses so that I can see what you saw and feel what you felt. And then just literally tell me this experience led me to want yeah. to be a physician or this experience strengthened my decision to be a physician, right? In your own words, but you don't need to be creative with it. It just needs okay. to really just tell me what, what it is you want to tell me. Yeah. Okay. And then, so, you know, I, I definitely have my, my two seed or my seed and my two watering events. Yep. Um, and I, I definitely am really confident in knowing what those are. Um, and I was just wondering if you think, so I have, I'm on my like fifth draft, I think of my statement. And so yep. I was just wondering, there's a part at the end where I think we've talked about how you kind of want to talk about obviously why you want to go into medicine, but mm -hmm. then kind of further a little bit, perhaps talk a little bit about what you would want to do, but obviously that's not the main focus. Yep. And so I did spend a little bit of time in my most recent draft talking about why I chose to do recently a medical humanities program um, and talking about how I really like the narrative medicine, you know, combined with my interest in medicine. I'm just wondering if that maybe just should be left out to save space for even more reflection. Um, yeah. So, so something like why you did a narrative medicine program or, or elective, whatever mm -hmm. that is, probably doesn't belong in a personal statement. Yeah. Um, that's showing a little bit more of your interests uh, and yeah. definitely potentially could fit in, definitely potentially as a, not, not the same, <laughs> uh, could potentially go in your extracurricular activity list. Yeah. The conclusion, which we haven't talked about yet uh, in Application Academy, conclusion is your kind of grand idea. What do you hope to accomplish as a physician? And that's yeah. that's where that typically will go. Okay. Yeah, that's very helpful. I mean, I think my, my gut was telling me to leave it out, but yeah. I just wasn't sure. Um, and then I guess in terms of trying to start getting feedback on it, um, yep. who... I just, I don't know necessarily who to trust with that. And obviously I want my family and my friends perhaps to read it and say, does this sound like me? But yep. you know, if they have constructive feedback, like who do I take seriously in terms yep. of, you know, trusting the, their feedback? Yeah, it's, it's hard uh, because someone who doesn't know anything about personal statements or the medical school application process mm -hmm may give you kind of feedback that fits their specialty or, or their yeah, exactly. profession or career and not necessarily what would work for medical school admissions. I think you can give it to whoever you want uh, if you trust their their opinion, if they are going to give you a, an opinion or if they're going to yeah. kind of protect your, your ego and not yeah. tell you the truth, I think is important. Um, in my personal statement book, there's actually a link to get a, a review sheet to send to people who maybe don't know about the medical school process. Okay. And so it, it gotcha. asks them questions like when you're done reading this, do you, do you, 
can you get a sense of X, Y, or Z? Um, and so that's something that may be useful to send out to some people to get some feedback. Okay, great. Um, and then I'm trying to think, what else? You know, something, I guess, that perhaps maybe you could give me some motivating words of advice, <laughs> but I think something that I'm also, you know, relatively insecure about regarding my application is, you know, my GPA isn't horrible, but it's yeah. also not the strongest. And, yeah. um, what is it? I currently am. It's right now I'm at a 3.5 and a 3.4 bio or science GPA. Okay. Um, I have two quarters left okay. I'm on the quarter system. Um, and so obviously I think I'm hanging right at that cut off, cut off where they do say like, you want to be above like a 3.5. And so I'm just, who says that? And it, I don't know. This, this <laughs> Student places. doctor network says that. Yeah. 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 True, true, true. Yeah. And so, so I just, so I'll stop you there. Know. So, so the number doesn't tell me anything, right? Okay. Your 3.5 could mean 4.0, 4.0, 3.0, 3.0. 0, or it could be yeah. 3.0, 3.0, 4.0, 4.0, right? Yeah, definitely. What is the story behind your number? Um, I mean, definitely freshman year and sophomore year are rocky. Like I have a, a mild upward trend. I don't okay. know how strong that would be. Um, in the last like junior, so I definitely got B's. I got one C in OCHEM sophomore year. <laughs> um, and then junior year, I got, you know, mostly A's, still a couple B's. And then last quarter, fall of senior year, I did get a 4.0. Great. So obviously my intention is to hopefully end with one and really like solidify an upward trend. Okay. But it's not something that I would consider like, whoa, crazy significant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you, you still have another quarter potentially, maybe two mm -hmm. that are going to be on your transcript for your application. I think as best you can get that 4.0 so that you have a, a much yeah. stronger upward trend going. Oh yes. And actually, you know what, that totally brought up something that I wanted to ask. Okay. So as being on the quarter system, I will be done with finals mid June. <laughs> it's um, a and terrible it, timing, isn't it? <laughs> right. So I was just, should I? Yes. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Especially for you, excuse. right? You, okay. uh, assuming you get a 4.0, right? Let's, let's wish, mm -hmm. hope for the best. Uh, you want those grades to be on your transcript for verification. Okay. okay and that, cause that wouldn't come in after the fact, if I submitted before it got verified? No, you, be, because the verification process, you you need to put those grades in your transcript that you then need to request that transcript gotcha. mid-June, whenever those grades are finalized, Ugh, you request <laughs> that transcript, send it to AMCAS, and so they won't start a verification process until that transcript is received. Um, okay. and, and so apply, make sure those grades are, are super finalized and you know what you're getting. You can submit then, but you need to request that transcript after the grades are, are finalized and in the system. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was very helpful. I yeah. Kind of a weird process. Yeah. The, a lot of students will potentially submit June 1st, let's say, right? Just the standard mm -hmm. thing. And then hope that they can update the schools in uh, yes. with their grades two weeks later, a month later, whatever those grades are, or the next semester, next quarter's grades. I like to think of this process as finalized, right? Yeah. When you submit your application, those are your grades. Because not every school will take updates. Not every school yeah. cares about your grade updates. And so it is what it is right when you submit, and that's it. So... Um, so for you, especially with the quarter system landing right there in the middle of June, just wait a couple of weeks. It's not going to hurt your application. You'll be fine. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. I Anything else? I can't think of any other, no, I can't think of any other questions. I feel like we covered everything. Let's, let's talk about MCAT prep. How are you preparing for the MCAT? I've actually already taken it. Um, Great. I did pretty well. I got a 517, so I'm pretty happy well. with my score. Pretty well. How did you study? Um, so I did, well, I studied in three months. I took, I started okay. in June 12th and I think I took it September 11th. Um, and so I did, so originally my intention was ambitious to do like three weeks of content review. And that is such an unrealistic expectation. I yeah. think I ended up taking like six weeks of content review, okay. um, use blueprint for the, um, the, what's it called? Practice tests. Yeah. 
how did, like how did those practice tests work for you? Were they pretty consistent it, toward your, to your real good. score? Um, yeah. Well, so I did jump a bit when I switched from blueprint to double AMC and I awesome. think that that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, obviously I'd rather it not overestimate <laughs> and, you know, jump down. Yep. Um, and you know, overall, I really liked how they were able to offer COVID, COVID length MCATs yeah. as well. Um, cause that was a huge issue this past year was, um, you know, double AMC doesn't actually offer COVID length practice tests. So it was really hard <laughs> to figure out the timing. Double AMC doesn't do anything for COVID. They, <laughs> they don't really care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm glad those blueprint exams worked out for you and, uh, congrats yeah. on that score. That's, that's an awesome score, obviously. Thank you. It's a relief to be done. <laughs> yes. Good, good. All right. Well, good luck. Hopefully the rest of application Academy will set you up for success yeah. as well. And, uh, I'll see you in office hours. So excited. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a good day, Dr. Gray. Bye. Bye.